Okay, um, the last part of this lesson <clears throat> um, is similar to our cosecant sine graphs. Secant is partnered with cosine in its graphical form because those are inverses. So if you take your red crayon and you draw the cosine along with me here, you'll see how these two are very closely related. So now if you did the last part with me, this should be pretty obvious. It looks just like the other two. Here are the other two. Okay, You've got peaks in the middle between asymptotes that touch the bottoms of these U shapes. And so you can kind of see that we have pretty much the exact same relationship here. The only difference is that with secant and cosine, they begin symmetrical around the Y axis as opposed to pushed off to one side. So. I can't stop my video, sorry. Come on in. So, if I have if I have my asymptotes here, we're going to make the same kind of relationship. So I'm going to begin with cosine and then we're going to end up with secant building upon our cosine. All right. So here we go. The first graph I'm going to draw is just my basic cosine graph which looks like this. Okay, then since this graph that we're going for has an amplitude of two, changing over to my orange, I have y equals two cosine x. Oops. Down to negative two, up to positive two, there we go. Kind of like that. There we go. Then I'm going to factor in the argument, which is a little different. Remember cosine? Okay, that changes the period. So our period for cosine is 2 pi, and the formula is for the new period of the graph you're drawing would be 2 pi divided by b, and our b value is 2. So our new period is pi. Okay, so here, if we start from the y-axis and we go to the right, this is what our orange graph looks like. It starts at a peak, it goes down to a dip, it goes back up to a peak. So if we're going to create that same movement, but we're going to squeeze it into the margin between 0 and pi, what would that look like? Well, if you look at this movement, right in the middle is the bottom of a dip. So if I'm over here, in the middle here would be pi over 2. So I'm going to mark that bottom of the dip there. The tops of the peaks are at the ends, so 0 and pi are the tops of the peaks. So if I draw my curve, it looks like that. Now the bad news is what we want to do is actually make more of these. So if we have a, a period of pi, now I'm going to go from pi to 2 pi, and I'm going to recreate that same shape, stopping in the middle at the bottom of the dip. Okay. I'm going to also go to the left with all of this and go this way. Okay. And here. Okay. Now, why did I keep going with that? Because I really wanted to get a full picture of what my secant graph looks like. So, what I just drew, the green one, is y equals 2 cosine 2x. Now I'm going to transition from cosine to secant. And as I do that, the first thing I want to do is mark the last graph that I do, which drew, which is my green one. I'm going to mark all of the x-intercept positions like that. And that is where I draw my vertical asymptotes. Oops. And this is kind of difficult because these are so narrow. Whoops. I'm doing it again. It's hard to get these just right with a cramp <laughs> that I have. Anyway, let's start with this one because I can kind of see this one a little better. You can see that the peak is supposed to be right in the middle between these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a U shape. We're supposed to touch here. I'm not quite hitting that right. There we go. Okay. And then down here we have a dip part of our green graph, so I'm going to draw an upside down parabola down here. 
And I have one here and here and so forth. So you see, as I go across the graph, I have uh, regular parabola, upside down parabola, regular parabola, upside down parabola. So I've got three regulars, four upside downs, and there you have it. That is the graph of the secant right here.